Welcome to the exam room live brought to you by the physicians committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. And this, this is the healthiest half hour anywhere online today. Appreciate you joining us right here on Facebook and on YouTube. Coming up today, we're going to be talking about the top five turkey alternatives for your Thanksgiving menu. Some amazing ideas to get the turkey off of your table. And this is great for longtime vegans and for people who have vegans coming over to their dinner this year, but have no idea how to do a plant-based meal. Well, here are some fantastic ideas for you. And the one bringing said ideas for us is dietitian Lee Crosby. And no clucking, we're talking vegan turducken. That is the main event in this year's top five turkey alternative. So as we are talking about these amazing recipes, I want for you to share what it is that you're thankful for this year. What is it that is going on in your life that you're grateful for? Let's bring some gratitude to the table this year. Post that in the comments or in the chat box. And also let us know what it is that you're having at your Thanksgiving this year. Let's get some more recipe ideas on there. Let's let's fill our minds and our bellies and our, our hearts with some amazing plant-based recipes here. And as we're doing that, let's learn about that vegan turducken. Here's my conversation with Lee Crosby. If you're vegan, and even if you're not vegan, but you have a vegan coming over for Thanksgiving dinner, well, what in the world can you possibly serve instead of turkey? Well, that is a good question and a perplexing one for millions of us. So let's go ahead and clear up that confusion. The best way to have a turkey-free turkey day here with Turkey Alternatives is my friend, your friend, everybody's friend, the Fiber Queen dietitian, Lee Crosby. Lee, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Chuck. You are providing the main event, the centerpieces, what to have instead of turkey. You're coming hard with five options. And let's just go ahead and tease the very final one. It is mind blowing, and I am excited about this. I How you discovered it? I don't know. Thrilled. <laughs> I didn't know such a thing existed. So you are truly doing the, you know, just God's work here this Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, we might be overselling this, but okay. <laughs> I don't think we are. I don't think it's possible to oversell what's coming. Oh, um, <laughs> but seriously, when you're working with patients over at the Barnard Medical Center or just, you know, interacting with people on social media and they're like, okay, this is my first vegan Thanksgiving, not having turkey. What can I have? You have to have gotten this question time and again. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have. So it's, again, it's, because our traditional dish, it centers around this giant dead bird in the middle of the table. So what do we do instead? Usually I'm getting it in terms of, I have to go to someone's house. How do I handle it? Honestly, when I get the question of what do I make? Oh, that's two thumbs up. I like when I get that question because there are all kinds of cool entree options that we're going to get into. I don't want to spoil it too much before we get into it, but there are a surprising number of things you can do that are, some of them are more of a labor of love, take a while, but even so in the not perfect, but sure better than a turkey are some of these, you know, turkey type replacements. So we'll talk about those too. Turkey type replacements. I think but that's the technical <laughs> term. All right. Well, well, yeah, let's, you know what, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So turkey alternative number one, what is that? Uh, not the top of your list, but not necessarily the number one. Again, we're building to an awesome finish here. So what, what's <laughs> wow. first on your list? All right. So the first on my list is actually recipe I came up with back in the day when I used to update my blog veggie quest that does not happen anymore because crazy busy, but um, it is a holiday quinoa loaf with a clove spiced date sauce. And it is so good. I wanted something that really just like screamed the holidays, but again, was not a giant, you know, dead bird in the middle of the table. And so what I came up with was this quinoa loaf and it has, it's awesome. It's packed with plant-based protein. You got your fiber, both soluble and insoluble, vitamins, minerals. That's nice. What's really in there that makes it taste so good. You've got these kidney beans, which kind of have that meaty texture, right? There's quinoa, and then you're also sauteing cooked. Then you're also sauteing onion and mushrooms and putting that all in together. But the cool part here is that spiced date sauce. So you take, you make a batch of it and what's in it. Let me tell you, it's so simple. It's actually not hard at all. Medjool dates, ketchup, dried mustard, allspice, cloves, water. That's it into a food processor. And what the, you do is you put half the sauce in with the loaf ingredients, form it into a loaf and the other half goes right on top. And then you bake it. It is 
so good. It's so pretty sliced up and you put it on a bed of baby kale, especially if you make two, because I tend to make double batches because life is too short to put all that in <laughs> and get one batch out. Um, the other fun part with this is if you end up with some of the extra sauce, which I inevitably do, it's really good swirled into pumpkin hummus. Ooh. Pro tip. Yeah. Yo. Okay, it's, we're going to put, put a pin in the pumpkin hummus. We're coming back to that because that just sounds amazing. But when you're working up a recipe, when you're creating something from scratch like this, how long does it take and what what is the trial and error process like just to get it right? So this recipe was actually, oh gosh, this is going to date me here. This was actually going back. This is an adaptation of a presidential candidate who shall not be named favorite meatloaf recipe going multiple election cycles back. I did a, I did a, during the election, I had two people, two presidential candidates, family recipes. I veganized them both and I gave them a heads up. And then this one, I was like, it's good, but it could be better. So I did a little more tweaking, but it, there's just a lot of trial and error. So in baking, that's really a science. You have to get the exact right proportions, ingredients, technique, cooking. You just, Oh, this has a little, I detect a little bitterness. How do we counterbalance that? We use a little acid. We use a little sweetness. We use a little, maybe a little touch of salt. Um, getting that flavor profile right for me is just trial and error, which is why some people can think a recipe is great and others who have a different, you know, slightly different palate are going to want to make it their own, which is why I encourage everyone to get in the kitchen when you have time and experiment a little bit. So you can look at a recipe and kind of know this is going to work for me or it isn't. It's kind of like trying on clothes. After you've done it enough, you're like, I don't even need to try that on. It is not going to work. And I'm looking at this ingredients list and it looks like this is a pretty hearty thing. So you're definitely not going to be missing that turkey. It sounds meaty. I mean, you said like the loaf is, is made with meaty kidney beans. It looks like it's kind of a stick to your ribs kind of dish. Oh, it is. And that was the other thing. I didn't want something where I'd be hungry in an hour. Because again, you're supposed to, I mean, now this is just cultural, but I feel like after a Thanksgiving meal, you're supposed to be like, oh. Yeah. You know, you're not going to want to eat for a long time. <laughs> this kind of fits that bill, but is still healthy and low fat and vegan. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed veganizing this recipe and kind of making it exactly what I wanted it to be. All right. So let's move on. Let's do dish number two here. What else do you have on your list of yum yums? Okay. Oh, this one is super yum yum. This actually is from a, uh, blogger friend of mine from back in the day, Kimmy, at a blog called Rock My Vegan Socks. Um, it is a wild rice tempeh and spinach stuffed butternut squash. So it sounds a little complicated. It's actually not that hard. It's more just time consuming. It is so good. I will say when I made this, I have had repeat requests for it. So my mom, actually, I made it for we do our own sort of separate holidays because we used to travel to see family, not this year, but she had then requested it for pretty much like every dinner we did together since then. So we were like having it at Mother's Day. It's that good. Um, so what you do, you take a butternut squash, which I'm going to brag on myself a little bit here. Our garden didn't do that great this year, but we did come up with 27 butternut squash. Oh, yes, we did. So 27? Yes. Um, no. I'm, I'm, well, thankfully butternut squash plants kind of thrive on benign neglect, which is what they got. So, but hey, we have a whole lot of squash to use up. So what you do is you cut the butternut squash in half, you, you know, get the seeds out, you roast it. While that's happening, you saute tempeh with some coconut aminos and some, a little bit of maple syrup and either liquid smoke or smoked paprika. Or the easy way to do it is I've actually swapped the Beyond Meat crumbles, not the burgers, those are really high in fat, but the crumbles in the freezer section are actually low fat. They're three grams of fat in a serving and they have kind of that smoky flavor. So they give you the same um, flavor profile without the work. And what you do is you take that and you mix it all together with the some of the squash flesh and some spinach and then some cooked rice and wild rice. And you, again, if you don't want to make the wild rice, you can even just use like frozen cooked rice from Trader Joe's or Diet. Um, you mix it all together, you mount it up in the halves and you roast it and it comes out as this, this gorgeous sort of, again, centerpiece look. And it's really, if you take some shortcuts, again, make some swaps, it's pretty easy to put together. It's just the time it takes to roast. That's it. That sounds pretty cool. And uh, you know what, just you mentioning the frozen rice kind of, it popped into my head. 
it, it dawned on me recently looking at the ingredients list. The frozen rice is actually just rice, unlike those 90 second pouches that sit out on the shelf. Those typically tend to have oil in them too. So I would say that the frozen rice is probably the healthier option if you're still looking to go that quick route. By far. Yeah. The only ingredient is brown rice. Sometimes I think Trader Joe's has one that's rice and maybe barley and some different colors of rice. The other thing is they cook up so much, well, I just say cook, they heat up so much better than the kind that's in the bag because they don't have that sort of weird added oil and salt in them. So yeah, I'm a big fan of those because sometimes you want a fancy meal and if, but it can be something or just, you know, a well-balanced meal, but you don't want to have to do all of these individual steps, especially on like a weeknight. So make life easy for yourself in general. And and, and Lee, I, I would be remiss here if I didn't uh, mention that uh, between the rice, the tempeh, the spinach, the squash, that's a whole lot of fiber. And I know, okay. I know you and I have talked extensively about fiber on this show. It's, I mean, spoiler alert, all of these recipes are going to be really high in fiber, minus the little store-bought ones that are just, you know, for in case of a, in case of emergency, roast this. But the rest of them are going to be really high in fiber. Why? Because it helps keep your hormones at a healthy level. It helps keep your cholesterol at a healthy level. It keeps your regularity nice and healthy. And I think that keeps everyone happy. So, you know, we want to have a happy Thanksgiving. You will get that with these recipes. Well, let's go ahead now and talk about the in case of emergency. Let's break that glass. And let's say that you are somebody who's in the kitchen, uh, maybe... Maybe not. Maybe you're the vegan person who is going to somebody's house and they call you in a panic like, I have no idea what to fix you. And it's like Thursday morning, right? And so you need something 911. Is there <laughs> anything on the store shelf that you can just go in there and buy that could be somewhat of a healthy option? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a couple of options. Um, one that I really like is the Gardein Holiday Roast. So again, it's plant-based. I think it is, it's soy and maybe also wheat protein or gluten. Um, so those two together, it's stuffed with a cranberry and wild rice filling. So it's quite tasty. Again, any of these store-bought options, it's a little lower in fat than the sort of the competing product, which is the Tofurky Roast, which is also, again, a decent option and relative to actual turkey, just leaps and bounds better. The only downsides with these is that they're a little higher in salt, lower in fiber. But again, if you're in a hurry, literally the all you have to do is stick them on a baking sheet and put them in the oven. So I shouldn't say if you're in a hurry, if you don't have time to do prep work, because they still have to roast. But if you were going to someone's house, which again, this year, unless they're already in your little pod, you're probably not going to. But it's so, so nice to just be like, oh, you can grab this or I'll just bring one and we'll throw it in the oven while we're doing, you know, appetizers and and chatting before the meal. And then you have an option that is impressive looking and easy. And here's the other thing, because it's intriguing, because it looks like turkey, but it isn't, you might actually get some people who hadn't or wouldn't otherwise try a plant-based option to give it a shot. So that's in general, if you are getting together with someone to bring a, a cool or impressive looking entree type centerpiece, not to compete with, you know, cause you don't want to upset the host, but just to give people some ideas on what else is out there beside, beyond the turkey, <laughs> beyond turkey. <laughs> well, you know what? The interesting thing is we're seeing a trend where so many Americans now, and probably this is a global trend too, so many people are trying plant-based meat, meat alternatives for the first time during the pandemic, some out of necessity, some out of boredom because, well, you're you're in your house and what else are you going to do but try new things, right? But we're seeing, I think it's something like one out of four Americans now has tried a plant-based meat. And so this would be another opportunity to go ahead and continue that trend not the worst idea in the world. Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, I've definitely used these at holidays because sometimes you have time to cook and sometimes you're making all these side dishes and you just want the thing to that's quick and easy to do. But yeah, I actually didn't realize it was that many or that percentage of Americans that were trying these plant-based options. I'm thrilled to hear it. It's great for the planet. It's great for their health. And clearly it's also great for animals. So yeah, this is a that's a win all around. Everybody does, in fact, win. And I think that it's also plausible, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's also plausible to think that uh, you could, if you were concerned about fiber and other nutrients, and this was your centerpiece, you could just load up on some healthier sides and still call it good, right? Oh, if you're eating a vegan Thanksgiving and you're making the sides from scratch, you're, you're, <laughs> you're going to be covered, truly. So in terms of fiber, 
yeah, is it better to have everything be from absolute whole plant foods? Sure. But again, if you're getting gorgeous fruits and vegetables and whole grains in your side dishes, you'll be fine. Well, let's go ahead and talk about this next dish because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, this could be the main event or this could also operate nicely as a side dish. What is next on your list? Okay, this is, there is zero shame in this being your main dish. And this is butternut squash mac and cheese. Because let's face it, honestly, most of us are showing up at Thanksgiving for the mac and cheese more so than anything else. Maybe that's just me. Um, but I have been plant-based for quite some time now. So the mac and cheese has taken a vegan turn. Um, this one I like because it's seasonal, right? It's kind of like in theme. Again, we're coming back to butternut squash and not just because I have a lot from my garden, but because this is a really tasty dish. Um, Again, it's surprisingly low in fat, but it's still really nice and creamy because you're gonna end up pureeing the butternut squash. You're gonna be using soy milk, which adds creaminess in part because of its higher protein content. So, and the other thing that kind of makes this entree you know, worthy, it's actually surprisingly high in protein. There are 22 grams of protein in a six of the recipe. Now, a lot of that's coming from pasta. You get eight grams of protein in a cup of pasta. Um, the soy milk and the nutritional yeast are all high in protein. And again, that nutritional yeast, the nooch, is going to give it a really nice, rich, savory flavor. So I don't see any reason at all not to make the mac and cheese your centerpiece. Giddy up on the mac and cheese. And this is a good recipe, one that I've had previously. Uh, I actually very much enjoy this. Um, it also has some carotenoids in there. And so let's talk a little bit about those health benefits. So if you're eating this, you're getting those carotenoids. What good is that doing your body? I love the carotenoids. <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? You are. You I are. call them carotenoids. You call them carotenoids, tomato, tomato. Um, Actually, maybe you're saying it right. Maybe I've been saying it wrong. Oh, I don't know. The I bottom line either. is we're, we're talking about the same thing. Does it really matter? That orange stuff in squash. Yeah, it really does. So they are linked. It's a, it's a powerful antioxidant. They're linked to some different health outcomes. The one I'm most familiar with is a decreased risk of breast cancer in people who are eating larger quantities of carotenoids in their diet. So sources of carotenoids, really any orange produce item. So if it's a squash, it's pumpkin, oranges, you're going to look to see, you'll, you'll see carotenoids in those. But the other place you see it, and this is so appropriate for fall, is in your green leafy vegetables, right? Because what happens when you when the trees and the green leaves, the green part starts to die, what color do you see underneath? Orange. Orange, that's okay. So yeah, orange and yellow, same thing in dark leafy greens, which you can discover if you leave collard greens in your fridge for too long, which I just found out this afternoon. They turn yellow, <laughs> but that means you can see the carotenoids. Oh, too much information. Um, so yeah, carotenoids are, that's a very long way of saying you can also get carotenoids in your leafy green vegetables and they're super good for your health. You are just an American treasure. Oh man, you were, you were the best. Uh, you know, th that is definitely not an overshare, but the fact that you, you, you know, you're humble enough to think that it is like that to me, just, uh, I, I love you for so many reasons. You're just the best. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. All right. So here we are. Here we are, Fiber Queen. We yes. are at the point where we have teased this from the top, okay? And yes. now what we have is the main event, something that I didn't think was even remotely possible to be veganized. But lo and behold, what have you gone out and done? You have done the impossible and you have found a vegan version of what? It's a vegan version of turducken, which is called veg duckin. Oh my gosh. Oh Say my it God. isn't so. I actually want to call it veg squashing because that's <laughs> more appropriate, but we'll go with veg ducking since that's how it was christened on the um, onegreenplanet.org website. I did not come up with this recipe. This was Jasmine Briones. No, if but I you her found name. it. You found but it. I did and that's find what it. matters. Okay. So, bottom line here is you I'll found it. You get credit. So, what is in this? <laughs> veg duck and masterpiece. It is pretty great. Again, we keep coming back to butternut squash. Maybe my brain is just in butternut squash mode. I tell you, I've been brainwashed by my own garden. Um, but so that's, so the outside is a butternut squash. So it's the same thing where you're cutting it in half and maybe it's just because they look very impressive. You're going to roast it just for a little bit. And then this is the fun part. So inside of that, you are going to have zucchini. Oh, sorry. Inside of that, you're going to have eggplant. And then you're going to have zucchini. And then inside the zucchini, where you sort of hollow it out a little bit, you're going to put a whole scallion. So in between each layer, you've got butternut squash. Then they have um, a stuffing recipe that then, so you layer, it's almost like a little weird encapsulated lasagna <laughs> inside. So you've got your butternut squash, a layer of stuffing, 
your eggplant and then a layer of stuffing and then zucchini, a layer of stuffing, a scallion down the middle. And then you literally tie it together with twine and you bake it for a little under two hours. And you end up with, when you cut it, it looks so cool. You have the veg duckin. Veg duckin. This is fantastic. That's it's what that is. Pretty epic. I am excited to make it. Like I am pumped up about the veg. Like seriously, this is something like you were saying. In all honesty, that you could take the garden roast to somebody else's house for Thanksgiving, and you get some curious people that would want to try it. I think that this is a guaranteed. Everybody's going to want to nibble on this to experience it. Not only because it looks fantastic, but the name Veg Duckin. Like who doesn't want to get a piece of that, right? I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, I would, I would 100% bring this to somewhere in someone's house. I know, right? How much time do you think is involved in this, right? I mean, this seems like this is a pretty labor intensive, not for a novice type of recipe. I don't know that it's that bad because the squash, I feel like the hardest part is probably just cutting the squash because you don't cook it first. I don't know if you've ever tried to cut a butternut squash lengthwise without giving it any little pre-cook. It's a whole thing. It's a thing. Yeah. It's like when you're carving a pumpkin and you try and kind of make those first cuts, you know, it takes, it gets your arm work out. You don't, you don't need the gym. You, you stay home and cut up a butternut squash. Um, the rest of it, I, I didn't remember there being a lot of other cooking. So it's more just about slicing. Um, and then the stuffing, you know, there was some sauteing and that kind of thing. But honestly, I think you could shortcut it and do like the Whole Foods has a vegan multi-grain bagged stuffing which isn't perfect. It's a lot of refined grain, but it's also got some whole grain in there. So you could honestly probably just cheat and use that. I haven't tried it. So if it doesn't turn out, <laughs> I apologize in advance, but I actually don't know. I think the hardest thing is you'd have to have cooking twine. That's like the most advanced part. The rest of it really didn't look as hard as you would expect. Hmm. All right. I may attempt this. I may not, but I may. <laughs> I don't if know. If you lose a yet. finger, I apologize. No, well, no, no, no. I think I'm advanced enough to not lose a finger in the kitchen. You oh, say the hardest part. <laughs> you say the hardest part is just chopping. So I think that we'll be okay. I got to procure some of that baking twine that you were talking about. Yeah. But uh, I mean, veg ducking, man. I mean, this right? is this is legitimate. Veg this is duck. like this is a discovery. Okay, what you have done here is you have just discovered something that is going to change somebody's Thanksgiving life <laughs> forever. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was Thanksgiving like for you growing up in the Crosby household? Was it a big old smorgasbord of every kind of Thanksgiving classic that you could possibly imagine? Yeah, there was a lot of that. So my extended family actually lives in Kentucky, both sides. So we always did our Thanksgiving with another family that were basically like our family in DC. And boy, howdy, it was a big big spread. Not as big as the spreads were in Kentucky because Eastern Kentucky, when it comes to food, it's just, you have 20 dishes or you got nothing. So it was, <laughs> it was extra impressive, but even childhood, you know, when we were having it, I grew up in McLean um, and it was McLean, Virginia. And it was, it was a, it was a production. There was, of course you had the, you know, the giant dead bird in the middle of the table, but there were rolls and side dishes. And, but the problem was, my stomach was never really okay with all the butter and the drippings and all those things. So it never really settled with me. And that's the other nice thing about these recipes is that your stomach will feel good when you're done. You'll be happily full instead of like comatose and unwell. <laughs> <laughs> that Thanksgiving I mean, food coma. How was your Thanksgiving as a kid? It, it was enormous. Um, I remember, so my mom was somewhere in the middle of 11 children, right? So she's oh, smack wow. dab in the middle of that. And I have something in along the lines of 33, 34 first cousins. Just and ask, how many cousins do you have? Yeah, so, so many. So we would <laughs> all get together at uh, my grandparents' house. And um, I mean, you want to talk about enough food to feed an army. We, we had that. And it definitely was the classic spread with like this enormous turkey, which to me, you know, thinking back as a kid seemed like it took up the entire table. Um, but then like sides galore, everything from mashed potatoes to green bean casserole to, um, you know, macaroni and cheese, not, not the butternut squash kind, uh, either, you know, all of these unhealthy, uh, items there that definitely put, you know, a good 50 people in a food coma. We were just passed out on the floor. Some people yeah. were in the lawn. It was just horrible. Yeah. Um, uh, but but that that was the the Thanksgiving tradition. Um, but I'll tell you the the funny thing though is that my grandma she she would pride herself 
in the turkey that she would cook. And and I honestly, Lee, though, I never really liked the taste of turkey. It just was not my jam. So dry and not yummy, even when it was moist, what was called like, oh, everyone's like, this turkey's so moist. It really wasn't, was it? No, it was always dry, dry as a bone. It was like eating like fleshy desert. It was, it was kind of nasty. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I honestly, I do not miss turkey fleshy for desert. things. I do not miss. <laughs> Sorry, that took just, a second. Yeah, it took a second. Nice turn of um, yeah. I, I do not uh, miss the turkey for Thanksgiving whatsoever. And so I actually get excited by the options here that we've been talking about today. I would much rather have this menu. I think even version 1.0 overweight me would enjoy this more so than having turkey for Thanksgiving. I mean, for goodness sakes, veg ducking, get out I of mean, town here, right? Veg duck and, and the colors and the textures and there's just a lot more going on. There's a lot more going for it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's food that you love that will then love you back. So it's again, it's a win-win. So my, my final question is this. So if somebody comes to you at the Barnard Medical Center, because as we say always, when you're on the show, you're not just a talking head. You are a no. real person. My goodness. I am. Yes. Uh, yeah. If somebody comes to you at, at the Barnard Medical Center and you're working with them on their diet you would feel comfortable giving them these types of ideas for recipes for Thanksgiving dinner. And matter of fact, you, you've got a Christmas dinner, um, you know, uh, so many other holidays coming up right around the corner, New Year's. Uh, I mean, bottom line is this is something that everybody can enjoy, feel confident in what it is that they're eating. And, and you know, it's enough to feed an army, but you know what? That's going to be a healthy army. That's right. A, a socially distanced, healthy army. But yeah, so again, if, if, yeah, if people were coming into the clinic, absolutely. The only ones where I might be like, hey, if you have high blood pressure, you might not want to do the commercial ones. You might just want to make a little something for yourself. But a lot of these recipes, again, they're not, they don't take that long. They're not that hard. A lot of them you can make in advance. So, and they promote health. And that's the really nice thing. It's so nice to have a holiday where you get done and you feel, yeah, you might be a little more full than you would choose to be otherwise but you don't feel ill. And I confess that I so often, when I was in my younger years, I ate all this food and it was so rich and oily and it just did not settle. And now I get to have holiday meals as do my friends and family and hopefully patients in the clinic too that are satisfying, but that also improve your health. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I would venture to say whether it's uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, any any of those holidays, these dishes, I mean, they would just make fantastic additions to anybody's table at any time. Um, and again, veg ducking. That's all I have to say. About yeah, I think that. we can just end veg ducking. Veg ducking. Uh, so <laughs> here's the deal. We're going to put all of those recipes in the episode notes for this show. Uh, you can also find them in the show descriptions if you're watching us on YouTube or on Facebook right now. Uh, but Lee Crosby, thank you so very much for uh, all of these wonderful turkey alternatives. Go ahead and schedule an appointment, by the way, with Lee. So we said that she works at the Barnard Medical Center. Uh, now here's your chance to do that. Visit barnardmedical.org or call 202-527-7500 to make that appointment. Lee, how many states are you available to see patients in now? Well, oh, gracious. Uh, we have, I hope I'm getting them all right. So obviously Virginia, Maryland, DC. I'm also licensed in Kentucky, Cal, uh, California. I can see patients. I think also Arizona and I may have missed one. So if I have my apologies, but it is on my profile on barnardmedical.org. If you go over to um, staff and providers, you will see the states where I can see you virtually. Outstanding. All right. Well, Lee, I look forward to seeing you virtually again in the very near future. Appreciate your time as always, my friend. We've posted links to all of those amazing recipes over on my Facebook page. So you can go ahead and search my name on Facebook or go ahead and click the link in the show description there. And, and that vegan turducken, let me actually show you what this looks like because Lee actually made this shortly after we taped the conversation. Check this out. She made this over the weekend. Doesn't that look amazing? That, my friend, is the veg ducking. So cool. She found the baking string, obviously, and just went to town with one of those two dozen, two and a half dozen butternut squashes that she had laying around in her garden. How amazing is that? Vegan turducken. I'll tell you, when we, when we first put this uh, audio up in the podcast on Tuesday, I'm telling you, so many people clicked over on this recipe. They were like, vegan turducken, how is that even possible? 
Well, my friend, the proof is in that picture right there. Let me pull that up full screen for you one more time. There it is. Vegan turducken. How's that for Thanksgiving? I'm telling you, who needs turkey when you got vegan turducken? <laughs> that is pretty, pretty amazing. That's the cool thing about plant-based eating. You know, it kind of forces you to think outside the box in the healthiest of ways, how to get creative in the kitchen and, and still create something that tastes amazing, but fuels your body with the healthiest nutrients possible. And the vegan turducken. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh man. I hope that you have a phenomenal Thanksgiving this year. I hope that you and yours are healthy and happy and you have plenty to celebrate as you sit around the Thanksgiving table, whether you're together or you're doing it virtually this year. I am definitely thankful that you are here and have helped make The Exam Room Live and The Exam Room Podcast the amazing, amazing shows that they are. Could not do that without your support. So this year, I am thankful that you are here. I want to say thank you one more time to Lee Crosby for coming strong with those recipes and also to the crew behind the scenes that makes the magic happen. Thank you all. And to you, my exam roomies, thank you so very much for being here as always and sharing some incredible recipes with us today. That's so, so amazing. Vegan turducken. And you guys are pretty creative as well. On behalf of everyone here at the Physicians Committee, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. We will talk to you again after Thanksgiving. Until then, stay safe, take a stand, and keep it plant-based. <laughs>